What up guys, World Stacker here again. Thanks for watching. I just wanted to make part three of my World Gorilla Emergency Currency from the Philippines. And if you didn't watch the last videos, you should do that. I, do, I get a lot into history. And I, I'm not gonna get as much into history this, uh, this time. I wanna make a little shorter video. But just to sum it up, during World War II, the Japanese invaded it, and all these provinces created their own little isolated guerrilla factions to fight the Japanese, and they had to implement their own money, and they printed their own money. So, right here, uh, well, that's what I'm doing in Philippines. I'm collecting and searching for really cool collectible war currency, and that's what I have, and that's the stack that I'm showing you guys. So, right here I have Cebu province and Mindanao. And I wanted to get this out of the way because it's the, it's probably the most popular ones, the most, the least rare. I mean, there's still rare emergency currency from the 1940s, but uh, probably the least rare. Uh, but still cool. Uh, so, basically when the Japanese invaded, they burned all the money, outlawed all the money of the Philippines, and introduced their own. They printed their own Japanese Philippines money, which I made a video about. And it was so worth it. The, Fil the Filipinos called it Mickey Mouse money because you couldn't buy anything. It was useless. Um, and then these guerrilla factions were so isolated. I mean, sometimes there'd be a couple hundred of them in the jungle, in a camp, just doing guerrilla raids or whatnot, uh, sometimes a couple thousand, but they're just so isolated, they needed their own form of currency and, you know, their own barter system so they could survive and, and exchange goods or whatever. So the Philippine government uh, ordered all these different provinces, especially Cebu to begin with and Mindanao, because these are big provinces, to print money in any way possible like they couldn't help them they couldn't send ink they couldn't send designs nothing they just needed to get it done and it was a big ordeal so right here I got my fil my Cebu one peso and these are in awesome condition so I really can't take them out of the plastic um, so that one's hard to see but here's a 25 peso And these are, uh, I hope you can read that because such good condition. I won't be touching these after I make this video and put them back in the plastic because these are crisp. Here's a 5 peso from Cebu. Philippine National Bank was the one uh, put in charge to make these. And this one's a 10 peso. And it's counter stamped, but I can't read it. Deputy Province Treasurer Leite. I, I'm not sure what it says exactly, but basically, since Cebu is so big and it had a lot more resources than a lot of the other provinces, the small provinces like Capiz or whatever those, um, they would send them money. They would send them notes that they made, but they would counter stamp, like, this is only good in this province, you know? So it's like they had their own money. It was the same notes, but it was, they had big old stamps and signatures saying this is only good in this province, not in Cebu. Here's the 20 peso. These are awesome condition. They're not going to be touched again as long as they're in my possession. Yeah, so there, here in Cebu, where I'm at, Cebu City, there's a currency museum that specializes in this war notes because the Philippine National Bank, they actually, not too long ago, they found in one of their storage rooms or whatever, a whole, lots of boxes of these. So they decided to make a museum and, uh, you know, plus show everybody the records of what was made, what was not, you know, and 
if you go to the museum, you get really good information, but they have stacks of these, but they're in horrible condition, you know, they're just, you could tell they're rotten in their water or whatever, um, so I'm glad to have these in perfect condition, almost. So, to the south of Cebu is Mindanao, and these, they made a lot of, they lo made a lot of notes. Mindanao is pretty big too. And I have a lot of doubles of these or multiples of these. So I'm going to be doing some giveaways. Like I said, these aren't the most rare of the emergency gorilla notes of the Philippines. But I mean, they're still awesome, you know. So here is a 20 peso. It's the biggest one I have. Not sure if they get bigger. Pretty good condition and I have a lot of this one is brand new. I mean, uncirculated condition. 10 pesos. Pause that if you want to read it. Um, pretty interesting. Um, it basically says that it's the law to, to take these. That these are legal currency. So if you're a shop or a little store owner you can't refuse these um, you know if somebody wants to buy rice with with this gorilla currency you it's law you, it's against the law to refuse and it also says they're guaranteed by the by the Philippine government that these are backed up and they'll be redeemed at face value or at whatever <laughs> exchange rate um, they agreed on after the war so a lot of these say redeemable after emergency redeemable after the war that kind of thing so it's kind of a big gamble if you don't win the war but they also knew America was on their side and was coming because thousands and thousands of USGI's were stuck here when the Philippines invaded it was a complete surprise so American GI's were also in these uh guerrilla factions they were actually leading some of them here's a 50 centavo this is huge considering it's only 50 centavo and they were running out of ink and paper I've this is pretty huge same with this one peso so yeah if you're the shop owner and you're taking these in, for payments at least you knew that at the end of the war you could go exchange them for uh, real money. Here's a five centavo. That's more like it. It's pretty getting pretty small. So yeah, especially in Cebu and I'm sure Mindanao as well, because they invaded Mindanao I think before they got to Cebu. Um, they were running out of paper and ink. I mean, there was zero imports anymore after the Japanese got there, and, you know, ink wasn't some kind of high commodity in the Philippines, so the local government was having to, this is tiny, the local government was having to break into shops and things like that just to find ink and paper eventually, uh, so a lot of these even though they're the same, they're not counterfeits. They're just printed on whatever paper they could find. So I have a lot of old notes. Com they're coming up in different videos, but they they are printed on whatever they could find. Especially these tiny provinces. Wait till I show you. Um, I mean, they were printed on brown paper bags and magazines and newspapers. So on the back, you can still see uh, advertisements and stuff from from the newspaper. But they're, they're real. They had to print these on whatever they could find. And, uh, yeah. And printing was a huge ordeal, too, because it's, of course, illegal. The Japanese, just having these was punishable by death if the Japanese caught you. So imagine what it was like for the bank, for the printer, for the designer, even. They had to find a designer. They just found some painter artist and convince him to design these Cebu notes and then 
you know, they had to keep him super secret and secluded and moving houses around Cebu to until he was done. And then, you know, the giant, you know, back then, printing presses weren't tiny and not, uh, te- technologically advanced like they are now. It was a huge, you know, manual press uh, with plates. Uh, they had to keep that secret and moving around the city and stuff like that. So, yeah. And then printing them. The bank had to hide huge boxes of these when they were printed, you know, so they could distribute them. It was just really, really interesting history. Um, so, yeah. This is part three. And I just wanted to show you my Cebu and Mindanao province emergency currencies. And... Stay tuned. Please subscribe because in the next, uh, oh wow, I just, I just realized something. I showed you this, 25 centavo. It's actually not Cebu. <laughs> I just looked. It's actually Bohol. Uh, so this will probably be in my next video when I show you my Bohol stuff. I don't know if I have much more though. Somehow I got this confused with the Cebu ones, but yeah, this this is from Boha, another province in the Visayas, just north, uh, south of Cebu. So that's pretty cool. So there, I guess that's three three provinces today. I have more Boha though, I think. So maybe I'll show you some more. Boha is where the uh, the famous Tarsier monkeys are only place in the world and where the famous chocolate hills are just for reference anyways I'm gonna be doing a giveaway pretty soon make sure to subscribe I'm gonna be sending out some of these and yeah if you're into history or war currency or whatever this will be cool for your collection all right see you